NC Mafia, welcome to Get Back to the Wrestling. It's Luke Giaconetti here, and it's a one-man boot this time out, as I'm going to be talking about the Versus System two-player card game AEW Edition, which I had the chance to play at Gen Con 2023 up in Indianapolis, Indiana. So for those who may not know, the Versus System is a trading card game produced by Upper Deck. Uh, best known for their sports cards, I would say, but they've been in this gaming space for a while with this system, uh, which pits two players against one another in a tactical brawl to knock each other out. Each player gets a main character, and the goal is to inflict enough damage to the other player's main character to knock him out, as I said. To this end, you can also recruit supporting characters, get equipment, play plot twists, which can change the flow of the turn. Now, one nice thing about the the versus two-player card game system is that the product is not collectible. You buy the box, and you have all the cards in the set, and from there, you can build the two decks you need to play. So you get your main characters, supporting characters, plot twists, and other cards, such as locations, which are the resources you use to recruit characters, and challenge matches, which are global effects, which impact all of your characters for an entire game. In the box, there, like I said, are 200 total cards, and this includes 12 main characters, which constitutes 24 cards total. More on that in a bit. Uh, And four challenge matches, which are not played as part of the deck. That leaves 172 cards divided between the two factions, plus some neutral cards, which is more than enough to build two decks to your liking. Now, for the AEW set, the two factions are baby faces and heels, naturally. Now, the main characters for the Babyface faction are Adam Page, Chris Jericho, John Moxley, Darby Allen, Chris Statlander, and Thunder Rosa. Now, for the heels, you can choose from Adam Cole, baby, Brian Danielson, Dr. Brick Baker, DMD, Jade Cargill, Malachi Black, and of course, MJF. Now, your main character is the most crucial piece because when they get KO'd, the game is over. Each main has two cards, a level 1 and a level 2. Each level 1 character earns XP tokens to level up in different ways. Adam Cole, for example, earns XP for the number of printed powers on each supporting character which you play. Earn enough XP, 9 in Cole's case, and you switch to the level 2 version of Adam Cole, which is more powerful. The basic turn goes like this, and I should say that this is the same system for all the Versus uh, uh, sets, and there's a bunch of different licenses that are available for for Versus, and they can actually uh, be mixed and matched. But the turn goes like this. You play a resource card, most of which are locations. For the purposes of the AEW set, the locations are the pay-per-views. Revolution, Full Gear, Double or Nothing, and All Out. You can also play any other card face down as a resource if you have no locations but they can only be used for recruiting, not not to activate powers. Some cards have printed powers that need uh, regular resources to activate. You can then play supporting characters, costing up to the number of resources that you have on the table. So if you have three resources, you can play a two-point supporting character and a one-point supporting character, or a single three-point character, or three one-point characters, and so forth. You then arrange your characters into a front line and a back line, and then begin combat. Um, and that, that's important, how you arrange and deploy your characters. Now, combat's the main focus of the game, and you have several options, including team attacks, attacking at range, special powers that are unique to each character. Bottom line is you're trying to inflict enough damage 
to stun your target, be that target a main character or a supporting character, and put a wound token on them. Each character has a set number of wounds. Wound them enough times, and they're KO'd. Now, this is where a lot of the strategy comes into play, as unlike in, say, you know, Magic the Gathering, you pick which enemy you attack. You're also limited in who you can target. When you're in melee, you can only attack front line to front line. Remember I said you can have to arrange them into front line and back line? So you can only normally, in uh, melee combat, attack front line to front line, unless you can stun all your opponent's front line characters, allowing you to attack the back line. Now, as the name of the system implies, this is definitely a versus-style game, where you have to consider the order and targets of your attacks. It's easy to see how this fits in a wrestling theme, with the top guys directing their underlings to take out the enemy's allies and exposing them for attack. Now, during my demo game, my favorite part of the game was the special powers of the individual characters. It's clear that the designers are wrestling fans, and AEW fans specifically. The various tag teams represented, including the Lucha Brothers and the Young Bucks, have an ability called Tag Team, where you trigger a power-up ability on one partner by discarding the other. For example, if you have the Young Bucks in play and you discard Matt Jackson, you can trigger Nick Jackson's uh, special ability called Super Kick Party, combining their strengths to attack a single opponent. Other characters have their own personal powers to use. MJF has the Dynamite Diamond Ring which he can use to inflict an additional wound when he stuns an opponent. And Darby Allen has a power called, and I swear to, I am not making this up. It's Sting! Where you can tutor through your deck to get a Sting card and put him on the field. That amused the living hell out of me when I saw that. The equipment is a lot of fun too. The AEW World Championship belt powers up whomever is holding it, but only main characters with the champion keyword can hold it. The table card is like a trap card. Attack the character equipped at the table, and you get stunned while they escape damage. All in all, this game seems like a no-brainer for gamers who are also AEW fans. All the cards use photographs for artwork. The selection of characters and locations will appeal to any AEW supporter. The game mechanic, it's fun and different enough from games like uh, the aforementioned Magic the Gathering or Pokemon to separate itself from those more popular games. And I cannot overstate this. The game is not collectible. For one buy-in price, you get all you need in a single box. Now, if you swing that way, uh, as this game is compatible with the other versus two-player card game sets. As I said, there's many different themes out there, available different licenses. Uh, for instance, at the demo, I ended up playing against a guy with a Mortal Kombat deck. So the cards do work together, even though he was fielding fighting game characters and I was fielding pro wrestlers. Uh, But I imagine, if you're listening to this show, and I imagine most players in general want to stick to straight up AEW games if you get the AEW box, I know that would be my preference. So if you want to check out the Versus two-player card game AEW, you can pick it up from Upper Deck directly at their storefront, which is UpperDeckStore.com. I did not see the game on Amazon as of this recording, but other Versus games are up there, so I am sure it will pop up there at some point in the future. Game retails for $34.99, and as I said, is designed for two players, so that seems about average for the cost of two decks worth of collectible uh, card game cards. If you figure, you know, know, about $15, $20 for a a pre-constructed deck from, from Magic. I do plan on picking this up. So big shout out to the Upper Deck booth crew at Gen Con. Their demo did a good job in converting me. A lot of helpful people there. Um, They they were were great. They had a whole setup and you couldn't just... What was interesting about Upper Deck at Gen Con was most places you can go up and talk to people and and, uh, sit in for a demo. They were actually scheduling times for demos. It was free, but they said, look, because they want to actually teach you the game, they said, we have to schedule a time. So I, I went on... I think I, I guess I went on Friday and scheduled a time for Saturday afternoon. Um, and then I just walked right in and they hooked me up with another guy. The guy I was playing against, playing the Mortal Kombat deck, had never played a collectible card game before, didn't have any familiarity with Mortal Kombat, had no familiarity with AEW. Um, so I'm not quite sure why he was there, but he was game. And uh, for what it's worth, I did win the game. So, uh, <laughs> um, So again, shout out to Upper Deck. I now throw it to you, the listeners. Are you familiar with the Upper Deck versus two-player card game system? Are you planning on picking up the AEW edition of 
uh, verses uh, from it from Upper Deck. I'd love to uh, love to hear from you. Email us at get back to the wrestling at yahoo.com. Um, you know, check us out on the Get Back to the Wrestling group on Facebook at GBTTW Podcast on Twitter X or whatever the heck they're calling it now. Uh, get Back to the Wrestling on YouTube. Use that hashtag hashtag Get Back to the Wrestling and hashtag N1C Mafia and so on social media. Love to hear what everybody thinks about this game. All right, that's all I've got, folks. Thanks for listening to this uh, this real quick hitter, one man booth freestyle episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check us out on social media. And until next time, we'll see you at the matches. No, don't you walk away from me, Daniel. Don't you walk away. I'm the one that loves the fans. I'm the one that loves everyone and everything. You're the one that gets up and walks away every single time. You're the coward.